Yes, in this sanctuary, this place that we call the Alaska Center for Spiritual Living, in this place that is our hearts, in this place that is Alaska, in this place that is our home, we come together. We come together in the name of love. We come together in the name of harmony. We come together in the name of peace. We come together in the name of oneness. We come together in the name of sound. Mm -hmm. We come together in the name of community here, right here and now, in the community that's lifting us, that's coming from Facebook Live. Please join me in affirming. And so it is. We are an interfaith gathering, a spiritual community that honors all teachings and all spiritual teachers. And now we begin the ceremony that celebrates the oneness of life, which acknowledges that all peoples and all faiths come for the one universal presence, which we call spirit. Our candle lighter this morning is Sam. There's always a backup. <laughs> and so let us begin. The Tao, honoring the universal path of harmony and equilibrium, the natural way. Shamanic traditions, honoring the beliefs and practices of all indigenous peoples, the way of pristine spirituality. Hinduism, Honoring the path of knowledge, action, and devotion. Judaism. Honoring the ethical path of living by sacred law. Buddhism. Honoring the four noble truths and the path of compassion. Christianity. Honoring the Christ consciousness as the path of love. Islam. Honoring the path of submission to the will of God as the highest calling. New thought. Honoring the metaphysical path of mental healing through the practice of universal spiritual principles. The last candle is the healing candle of love. We invite you in the stillness of your own mind to bring to awareness the names of anyone you wish to be included in this healing flame of love and light. Now that our flames of faith are fully lit, we move forward into our celebration, realizing and reaffirming that all paths lead to God. Thank you, Sam. Please join me in our purpose, vision, and mission. Our purpose, our reason for being. We awaken and inspire love and oneness. Our vision, what do we want to create? What do we want to become? We are an empowered, uplifting, inclusive community. And our mission, how are we going to go about doing this? We teach spiritual transformation with grace and joy. Joy was in the house earlier, and she really lives up to her name. <laughs> Our reading today comes from Thich Nhat Hanh. Um, yesterday, I'm not sure that um, those of you who might have seen it, some may not know this, but um, yesterday was his uh, going home. Mm -hmm. And so in honor of him today, we have some quotes. We are here to awaken from the illusion of our separateness. Every thought you produce, anything you say, any action you do, it bears your signature. To live in the present moment is a miracle. The miracle is not to walk on water. The miracle is to walk on the green earth in the present moment to appreciate the peace and beauty that are available now, and so it is.
morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Karen Blair Sherman, and I'm one of the licensed practitioners here that we call the Alaska Center for Spiritual Living. And we are so glad that you are here with us this morning, whether you are here in the sanctuary or whether you are watching us at home on Facebook Live. One of the things that we love to do here at the Alaska Center for Spiritual Living is pray. I'm sure you have figured out by now that this is an interactive part of our service right here. Yes, we love to pray. There are many ways that you can receive prayer. You can call in and you can receive prayer. Reverend, you can leave a message. Rev Don will get that message and he can call back to you. If you are here in the sanctuary, you can write a prayer request, put it in the box as you walked in and we will know the truth for you because I will send out those prayer requests this week and we will be praying for you all week. And I think that there is, Anne, can you help me out? I can't remember how many of there, there are of us. 16? 17? Somewhere around there. 17? So 17 of us will be praying for you all week long. You also can go online. Rev Linda keeps track of those prayer requests. She sends them to our email address and we also know the truth for you all week long we love to pray and if you would love a one-on-one -on -one service you are welcome there are cards in the back you can take one of those cards and reach out to us personally you also can go online and request that someone get in touch with you or you can call in again here at the center and one of us will get in touch with you we love to know the truth for you we love to know the truth for each other because we reach out to each other we know that prayer works, works. works. prayer works. what Works. works all the time all the time that's right sam all the time prayer works and so when you do not know the truth for yourself we will know the truth for you and we also love to celebrate with you when your prayer comes to fruition let us know and we love to like send more joy and more bountifulness goods around that okay so now there are ways that you can say yes there's many different ways that you can say yes that are happening we have the season of peace that is coming up. It is starting next Sunday. Can you believe it? Yeah. It's already upon us next Sunday. But before we get to that spiritual law of circulation, um, there is a group of us that get together, and every year we determine where 5% of our money will go from our um, gracious giving. And this month it is going to the Alaska Immigration Justice. So that is just wonderful. We'll be telling you each month where um, that 5% of what you give is going to. Meditation is more than you think. It is um, a five-week course. It's going to be done via Zoom by Christina and myself. It's on Saturdays starting January 29th going till March 5th, 9 a.m. to noon. If you would like, there's no prerequisites, no books needed, just you. And there's a cost of uh, 245 for your investment. And you can call in to sign up for that class. And also, there's a book study that is happening from one of our practitioners. And she's also a Reverend Anne Lazenby and Reverend Rachel Hollander, who used to attend our center. Re uh, Rev Rachel wrote a book from there to here. I just signed up for this book um, study yesterday. It's free, and it's a wonderful way of looking uh, into the navigation of our darkness because where there's light, there's also some darkness because we are human after all. And that will start Sunday, February 27th to March 27th. That also is via Zoom, and it's from 3 to 5. Next Saturday, this actually this Saturday, sorry, because today starts the week. This Saturday, January 29th at 4 o'clock p.m., our own Gail Jackson, she's a sound artist, and she is going to be gracing us with a sound immersion. The cost is $30. It's a small investment for what can transform your body. How many people here have done a sound immersion before? And you can all attest, I'm sure, that it is a wonderful experience because the first thing that we were born into as infants is sound in your mama's womb. And so allow yourself to feel, feel that innocence of that 
of going back to your infant. And next Sunday, Rev. Don will have a wonderful message for us, but quickly at 12 o'clock Alaska time, you can go to the kickoff Season of Peace. It's going to be going on from January 30th to April 4th, but Rev. Robert Berzinski of New Thought Media Network and our own Cindy Hensley are going to be uh, emceeing this wonderful season of nonviolence with the Association of Global New Thought. Michael Beckwith will be a part of that. He will be doing the prayer and the opening. Also joining for this dynamic kickoff are New Thought musicians Faith Rivera, who has come to our center before. Some of you might remember she is a wonderful, beautiful singer. And also Harold Payne. Tune in to New Thought Media Network on Facebook at noon, Alaska time. And they will be um, honoring the 25th year. So it's the 25th year of the season of nonviolence, 15th for us at the center participating in that. And so it is to um, honor the peace activists, Martin Luther King Jr. and Mahat Gandhi. This uh, was started, I don't know if you guys know this, but it was started, Michael Beckwith was part of the startup of this non, um, the season of nonviolence, and so was Mahat Gandhi's grandson. So, uh, did I leave anything out? Mm, oh, before we go to our special music, I want to um, let you all know that a special person will be coming up here in just a moment to give us this wonderful message. She always just has this wonderful way of not only connecting to a message that's like meant for us, but it comes through her as she's experienced it. Many times her messages come from real applications of her own life. And I always love that about Linda, that she's willing to be vulnerable and put herself out there and just let us know that not only does this work for us, but it's come through her already. So I love you and appreciate you. And midnight. Okay. Mm -hmm. one, on one more announcement. Oh, one more announcement. Yes. Centering Prayer, Saturday, February 5th. The, uh, this is three one-hour sessions, right, Bob? It's a little bit different than normal. It goes from 9 to 12 via Zoom, and you can find the link at cslalaska.org. Or see Bob if you're here if you'd like more information. Now, on to special music. Thank you. 
thank you, thank you, thank you, choir. And uh, our Aaron is uh, on the beach in Hawaii. Hard and life. so, Hard where? Life. Hard life, yes. Yeah. So, a uh, special thank you to Eric for stepping in and helping us today. Thank you very much. Um, and it's been a while since I've thanked Bob and Amy back on sound and Facebook. Thank you guys. You make us all sound amazing. Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Ah, hi, how's it going? Oh, welcome to the talk that is labeled on call, but really should be called uh, the rabbit hole of Linda's mind. <laughs> so, so there's going to be some free thinking going on here. And, and uh, just uh, bear with me as I kind of uh, reveal to you um, how I think. So, first I want to announce that I have accepted a new position. Yeah, I'm excited about it. Yes, this is good, this is good. Um, the interesting thing about this position is that I will be on call for seven days. Seven days on, then seven days off. 24 hours a day on call for seven days. I have not had a job where I've had to be on call for that amount of time. And so as you can imagine, I have been thinking about this. What does this mean and how does this, how does this affect my life? And so, in rabbit hole time, I thought about Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> okay, how did I think about Ellen DeGeneres? Well, does everybody know who she is? She's a talk show host. She yeah, comic, the whole nine yards. She uses her talk show to do amazing things to recognize the average person. Um, but do you know how she got her start? Back in her 20s, um, she had a routine, and it was called a phone call to God. And, and so she um, got to thinking about fleas. And she wanted to talk to God about why <laughs> are there fleas? This makes no sense. So she had this amazing um, presentation, and she was invited for the first time to go on to Johnny Carson and to do this routine. Well, Johnny Carson, up to that moment, had never invited a comic to come sit down and talk with him. They got to come out onto the stage, they got to do their routine, and they got to move on. Well, at the end of this routine, she looks over and Johnny Carson says, come on over, Ellen, sit down with me. And that is her big break. And that's how her uh, career started on its, its path to being the mega celebrity that she is today. <sighs> So rabbit hole time. So I'm thinking about Ellen and this phone call to God and how we talk to God. And, and so then I, I started to think about what we in religious science believe. What is it that we believe? So bear with me. We believe in God the living spirit almighty, one indestructible, absolute, and self-existent cause, this one manifests itself in and through all creation. In and through all of creation. What does that mean? Oh, that means that we are made of God stuff. I'm made of God stuff. Claire, you're made of God stuff. Karen, you are God stuff. Because there's no other stuff to me to outside of the God stuff. So we're made of God stuff. Doesn't, wow, doesn't it like make you want to sit up taller? It does me. My second point, my second thought, my second belief. We believe in the individualization of the spirit in us. And that all people are individualized expressions of the one. Huh? What does that mean? What does that mean? What 
that means, oh, can't be. That I was sent here to be me? That I was picked to show up to be me? That God put this together and sent me here to be exactly who I am? Oh my God, I don't have to be somebody else. I get to just be me. Wow, that takes a load off, doesn't it? I'm like, that's, that's kind of cool. Now last, the third point. <sighs> the highest God and our innermost God is one God. We believe that God is personal to all who feel this indwelling presence. Which means that that st small, still voice of the divine presence, of the creator of this universe, of all there is, is in you and me. And we get to choose whether we're going to listen to that voice. Are we going to create a space where we can hear what's being said to us? Wow. So we're made of the God stuff. We've been sent here to be us. And we have a voice that guides us on what we're here to do. Oh my God, we have won the lottery, have we not? I mean, think about this. This is like an incredible system. I'm like so excited that this gets to be my spiritual truth. Now, Jane Beach said it a little better than I did, so I'm going to share this with you. Um, and she titled this The Face of God. I am the face of God. Can you say that? I am the face of God. Whew. All right. And she says, I am a soul on a journey, interconnected for all eternity with everything I see and don't see. The thread of life joins me to you and you to me. Born of the one that created us, we are love itself. Come to this time and space to share our gifts in ways that are unique to each of us. Together, we are the face of God. Life itself, and that's a glorious thing. Whew. I am the face of God living Life living itself through me, as me. Think about that for a minute. No matter how old you are, no matter where you live, no matter what your education or economic status, you've been picked to be here. You, Sam, you. You've been picked. Jessica, you've been picked. Heather, you've been picked. That's amazing. So as most of you know, I got to become a chaplain at Providence Hospital. And I have to tell you that that job was custom made for me. I was picked, I was chosen, I was sent here to be a chaplain. No doubt about it. Absolutely that's who I was. Yeah. Except for that small, still voice that was hitting me in the ribs that kicking and eventually me screaming going what do you mean 
I'm supposed to do something else. Some of you knew I went into like a huge depression. Like, what do you, what? No, this is me. I'm a chaplain. I'm a chaplain. <laughs> Bless you. What do you mean? Say no. You're messing with me. But I said no. And I can't tell you how bummed out I was, how rejected I felt, how <sighs> I felt like I was spitting in the face of God. But that's because I didn't know about the other shoe that was about to drop. And the other shoe that was about to drop was my dream job came open. And I saw it, and I went for that job with everything I had. I mean, I'm serious. I wrote up a cover letter and emailed it to the person who was ahead of my, the department I wanted to be in, to the HR person, to the president of the company. I was like, I am here. You need me. <laughs> and they called. Yes. Um, and a long story short was I've been hired by this company into my dream job to do work that is so intense, that is so meaningful, that it makes the life of looking like a chaplain look like they're, and I'm at Disney World. This job is so deep. And this job is going to call upon every ounce of faith and belief that I have. But I tell you, I was meant for this job. This job is so custom made for me. Now, let me be clear. When I'm on call, when that phone rings, it means that something has gone terribly wrong for someone. I'm going to be working with people who are having the worst day of their life. And it'll be my job to walk in with hope. Rabbit hole. Let's go back to Ellen. Let's go back to that phone call to God. How did she come up with this routine, a phone call to God? Well, she and her girlfriend had had a fight. And the girlfriend had come to the place where she was doing a gig that night to apologize and to get, you know, to make it right. But Ellen was pretty angry and still upset. And so she kind of blew her off. Well, uh, as her girlfriend drove home that night, she got in an accident and was killed. And so Ellen found herself no longer able to afford the apartment that they lived in together. Um, she found herself in a position where she wasn't being acknowledged because, of course, back when she was 20, you couldn't be gay. So she found herself in this really small basement apartment that, guess what, had fleas. And so at her darkest moment where she was sitting there looking at this fleas and going, really, really, God, you have taken my beautiful girlfriend who was kind and loving, and you have put me with fleas. And that's where that routine came from. The worst moment of her life led her to becoming a world-known, beloved celebrity with more money than she could count, with the ability to have as many dogs as she wants. She uses her platform to reach out and touch people, 
She, she oftentimes will recognize the average person who's doing something extraordinary. You know, the woman whose best friend died and so she adopted her eight children. Or, or the person who's doing the food pantry out of their garage. The average person, the average you and me's, who are doing something extraordinary. And here is Ellen telling those stories. And she's encouraging people to be kind, to be nice. And that all came from fleas. Think about that for a minute. Fleas. The God plan for her was so much bigger than she could ever imagine. Just like the God plan for me is so much bigger than I could have imagined. Huh. Are you thinking about your own life right now? Are you? Are you kind of thinking, did I, did I, am I doing the God plan? Or, or did I go fishing? So I have some questions for you. Do you believe that you are made out of the God stuff? Do you? Do you really? Is it, if anybody's going, mm, pay attention to that. Do you believe that God is working in, through, and as you? Do you believe that? That you are an agent of God? Do you believe that? Do you get that? So where are you playing small in your life? Where are you not doing something because you're not good enough, or you don't have the skills, or you don't have the money, or you're not in the right area, or your boyfriend does this, or the dog needs that? Where are you containing and playing small? Where? Here's what I know. God has a dream for you. God has a dream for me. And I honestly believe that I'm stepping into that dream. And I'm living that dream. So this week, think about your dream. Think about your role. Um, you're the only person who can be you. No one else can show up on this planet and be Mary. No one else can be Bob. Don't we all know that? <laughs> God, I wish I could be Bob, but <laughs> I was not given that special <laughs> stuff. So um, remember that a bunch of fleas created a celebrity. And I want to end this with uh, Thich Nhat Hanh quote, and he said this, enlightenment is when a wave realizes it's the ocean. When a wave realizes it's the ocean. You're the ocean. Namaste. God is that dream. God is that oneness. God is the light. God is perfect health. God is the unique person called you. 
you are this perfection, this perfect health, this divine wholeness of love and peace and joy. Mm. And right here and right now, I know for each of us that God is working through in each of us as we bring forth those dreams, that peace, that love into our lives, into ourselves, into our family, into each other, as we come together in this love. And I wrap myself in this knowingness and I give thanks for this knowingness of this perfection, of this belief that we carry, knowing that our prayers are manifested for the uniqueness that we are as God. I give thanks, I release, I know that it is absolutely so. Please join me in affirming. And so it is. these people who are worried that their cell phones um, or like their microwaves are, are spying on them? <laughs> you heard about this? So um, the truth is they don't need to worry about those. You need to worry about your vacuum cleaner. <laughs> it's been collecting dirt on you for years. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, I, I'll stick to talking, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so we just want to take a minute to acknowledge those who are live with us on Facebook, Lynn and Marion, uh, Judith Mack, 
Now, there's a name here called Ellen Call. Now, if you're the Ellen Call that I knew a million years ago, hi, how's it going? Thanks for stopping in. Cindy Hensley, Hadley, Ann Lazenby, Cynthia George, oh my God, Michelle Koontz, um, Millie Larson, and Barbara. Thank you, thank you for joining us live this morning. And so now comes uh, a, a, a unique and wonderful practice of circulation where we get to take our tithes and our offering and, and give them to Judy. And then for those of you uh, here in the center, please also take a, a affirmation card. But together, let's say our affirmation. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God, and so it is. Woo! God is my source. God is my power. God gives me everything I need. So I give thanks, thanks for all my blessings. God gives me everything I God is my source, God is my power. God is my source, God is my power. God, God is, is my, my source. source. Woo. Woo. Okay. As we come to a close today, I'm so honored to have spent this time with you. I invite you to think about what Linda gave to us today. What is your extra ordinary what is your extraordinary your god plan where are you playing small or accepting small in your life are you living your dream and if not pray and move your feet <laughs> and so our affirmation going to leave us with what Linda did, did with from Takhatnan. Enlightenment is Enlightenment is when a wave realizes it is wave realizes it is the ocean. It is, it is the, the ocean. ocean. And so it is. And so it is. <laughs> was a time in my life I thought I'd have to do it all for myself. Didn't know the grace of God was sufficient. Didn't know the love of God was a hand. Now I can say you are discouraged, struggling just to make it Got to lie.